Okay, so in this video, we're going to go through Pythagoras and trigonometry, um, which are both to do with right angled triangles. So let's look at Pythagoras first. Um, Pythagoras was a Greek mathematician, um, I think it was a few hundred years before Christ, and um, he came up with an interesting theory to do with right angled triangles. So let's just consider an example um, problem. Let's say we have um, this right angle triangle. Let's say we have side lengths 3 meters and 4 meters, and we're trying to find um, oops, this side length, we'll call it x. Okay, um, the way we begin is by labeling the sides, and we call the short sides um, A and B, and the long side we call C. Now Pythagoras' theorem was that the short side squared plus short side squared equals the long side squared. That's Pythagoras' theorem. Short side squared plus short side squared equals long side squared. So that can help us, or we can use this theorem to work out the length um, of the long side in this case. So we've got um, A is, is 3. 3 squared plus B is 4. So 4 squared equals C is our X. So X squared. Now 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, so we've got 25 equals x squared, um, which means that we take the square root of um, to find x, so we're going to get x equals 5 meters. Okay, let's consider a slightly different type of problem, um, still to with Pythagoras. So let's say that we have another um, right angle triangle. And let's say that we know that this length there is 13 meters, this is 12 meters, and we're trying to find this length here. Now it's still Pythagoras' theorem, so we could still write the theorem as, um, firstly let's label our sides, so A and B are the short sides. It doesn't matter which way around we do A and B, as long as A and B are the two short sides. And then we've got to we'll write our, um, our formula again, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Always a good place to start with the problem. If it involves a formula, write the formula first. Then um, a is our x, so x squared, b is 12, 12 squared equals c squared is 13 squared. Okay, let's just change our squares to actual numbers, and so we can see a bit more clearly what they're what they equal to. So 13, 13 squared is 169. Now, to get x on its own, we've got to subtract 144 from both sides. That is going to give me x squared equals 25. So I'm actually going to get the same answer, x equals 5 meters. That's just a coincidence. It just happened to work out that way. Okay, so that's Pythagoras. Now Pythagoras, um, his theorem only deals with side lengths. It does not involve angles of any sort, um, but that's, that's Pythagoras. Then there's trigonometry. So let's have a look at trig. Trig for short, but trigonometry. Now, trigonometry is um, also to do with right angle triangles. In fact, it only applies to right angle triangles. But um, it's to do with angles, it involves angles, unlike Pythagoras. So let's look at um, three example problems uh, for trigonometry. Okay, so again, only right angle triangles. Now, let's say that we know that this angle here is, I don't know, let's say 50 degrees. And let's say we know um, this side length here is 10 meters, and we're trying to find x, this side length over here. Now again, we begin by labeling the sides. The side labeling is a little bit different from Pythagoras. Um, we call the long side of the triangle, the longest side, which is opposite the right angle, we always call that the hypotenuse, or h for short. Now this side up here, I'm not interested in that side. I don't, I don't know what it is, and I'm not trying to figure it out, so I'm going to leave that on blank. But I'm going to label this side my adjacent side. If I was labeling this side up here, I'd call it the opposite, because it's opposite the angle. Can you see that? It's opposite the angle. So that would be my opposite side, but I'm, I'm not going to label it because I don't know what it is, and I'm not trying to find it. And this side length um, x, I would call my adjacent. Adjacent just means next to. See how it's next to the angle. So it's next to the angle, but it's not the hypotenuse. Then what I would do is I would write a little acronym, which is SOCA-TOA. Now, trigonometry involves three um, ratios or functions, which are sine, cosine, and tangent. 
and I write Soka Toa to help me to work out which of the three I am going to be working with. Now in this case, I look at my letters. I've got A and H. So then I look at my um, Soka Toa and I see which of those has A and H. And I see that this one, the middle one, Ka, has A and H. So I'm going to be working with I'm going to be working with cosine. Okay, because of my side lengths are A and H, I'm going to be working with cosine. Then my next step is I draw a little equation triangle. Okay, and we're going to see how this works. So in the bottom left, I write my, my cosine, cosine of my angle. And this is in the Greek letter theta as a general symbol for an angle. And then in the middle, I write A. Down the bottom, I write H. So we're using the letters of ka. Co cosine first, then A in the middle, then H down the bottom right. The next thing I do is I cover up the thing that I'm trying to find. Now I'm trying to find x, right? x is my adjacent side, that's my a. So what I do is I cover up a and it tells me how to find it. Okay, it tells me that a equals, and there's, it's like there's a multiplication sign here. So when I cover up a, what do I see? Well, what I see is cosine of the angle times h. Okay, so I'm going to write cosine, this is my formula, cosine of the angle times h. Once I've done that, I substitute in the values from the question. A is my x. Um, my angle is 50 degrees. And then multiplied by my hypotenuse, which is 10. Then I, all I need to do from here is just plug this into the calculator. Now, just a side note here, you need to make sure that your calculator is set to the right setting. It has to be set to degrees. So if we go cos 50 times 10, we should get 6.43 meters to two decimal places. Now, if you did that and you got 9.65, that means that your calculator is set to radians. And the way to set it to degrees differs from calculator to calculator, but your calculator must be set to use degrees because we're working with an angle and degrees here. So it has to be set to degrees, not radians. You're gonna to have to figure out how to change that setting before you can get the right answers. Um, for the right answer for this question. Okay, so that's one example of a um, trigonometry problem. Let's have a look at a different example, um, which is similar, but has one, um, one slight difference. Okay, so we've got a right angle triangle, this angle here, um, which looks pretty similar to the last one, but let's go with 45 degrees. And let's say that we have um, this side here is 5 meters. We're trying to find this side here, the long side. Now our first step, as in the previous question, is we want to label the sides that we're working with. So the one we're trying to find is our hypotenuse, that's the longest side. And this 5 meters, well that's opposite the angle, right? Can you see that? It's opposite the angle, so that's our opposite side. So we label it with an O. Again, the side up, up here, we're not interested in, right? We don't know what it is and we're not trying to work it out, so we just leave that one blank. Then we write our little um, acronym, so uh, this is to help us to work out whether we're using sine, cosine, or tangent. And the letters that we've got are O and H. So that tells me that tells me that I'm going to be working with sine, okay? Because I've got SOH has O and H in it, so I, I circle that one. And then um, I know that I'm working with sine in this question. So the next thing I do is I draw my equation triangle with sine. Um, down the bottom left, so using my SOH, so I put sine in first, sine of the angle, and O in the middle, and H down the bottom right. Now, again, we use the equation triangle by covering up the thing that we're trying to find. So in this case, what I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find H, right? I'm trying to, my X is my long side, it's my H, so I cover that up, and it tells me how to find it. It tells me that I go O divided by, or over, sine theta. Okay, so it tells me how to find it. It tells me that if I go h, h equals, I cover that up, o over sine theta. Okay, so it equals o over sine theta, sine of the angle. Then I substitute in the values from the question. So h is my x, o is my 5 meters, and sine of the angle is sine of 45 degrees. Again, make sure your calculator is set to degrees. I'm going to do that in my calculator. 5 divided by sine 45 gives me 5.88 meters. Okay. 
So similar sort of question, but slightly different because we ended up doing a division rather than a multiplication. Okay, now there's just one last type of trigonometry problem. Um, we've just done two problems where in both of them we were trying to find a side length. Let's do a problem where we're trying to find an angle. Because we can also use trigonometry to work out an unknown angle. So let's say that this is our x here. And let's say that we've got um, our lengths. Let's say we've got 5 centimeters and 2 centimeters there. Okay, first step, as always, is we label the sides. So I've got my opposite side here, okay, it's opposite the angle, and I've got here my adjacent side, next to the angle, but not the hypotenuse. So again, let's write out, so the first, the initial steps are the same. It's going to get a little bit different later on, though. So now, my letters that I'm working with are O and A, so that tells me that I'm working with Tiller which is, um, means I'm looking with tan in this question. So again, what I do is I draw my equation triangle, and I'm dealing with tan, so I write tan of the angle, and I write O in the middle, and A down the bottom right. And again, I cover up the thing that I'm trying to find. Now this time I'm trying to find the angle, so I'm going to cover up this, and it's going to tell me what that is equal to. Okay, so it tells me that tan of my angle is equal to, what do I get when I cover that up? O over A, right? So O over A. Then substituting the values from the question, I got tan of X equals, what is it? 5 over 2. Okay, now here's where it gets a little bit interesting. Um, what I've got is I've got X, which is my angle, and I've got 5 over 2. So I've got tan of x equals 5 over 2. In other words, if I put x into my tan function, I get 5 over 2. Okay, so if I take the tan, the tangent is a function, it's not, it's not a number. It's like a, it's like a machine that you put a number into and it, it does something with that number and gives you out a result. So if I put x into my tan function, I get 5 over 2. But what I want to do is I want to go backwards from 5 over 2 to work out what x is. To do that, I have to do the opposite or the reverse of tan, which is a function we call inverse tan. Okay, so whenever I'm trying to find an angle, I'm going to use an inverse function. Inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tan. These are usually on your calculator above the sine, cosine, or tangent button. So I'm going to go x equals inverse tan of 5 over 2. Now I'm running out of room a little bit. Um, but if we put that into our calculator, we should get our angle. Okay, so I get inverse tan of 5 over 2. And I get, the calculator's on the wrong setting, bear with me, 68.2 degrees. And that would be my angle. So that's Pythagoras and trigonometry. Pythagoras, we can find the long side or the short side. Pythagoras only deals with side lengths, not angles. But we can use it to find the short side, um, the long side, or, the or one of the short sides. Then we've got trigonometry. We've got finding a side length where we multiply, finding a side length where we divide, and finding an angle where we use one of the inverse um, trigonometry functions, inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent.